Hi, I'm Akbar, the developer advocate at Figma, and I'm here with Clara, and we're going to talk about bridging the gap between developers and designers. I'm Clara. I'm a designer advocate here on the team and super excited to dive into this topic just because we hear about it so much with our customers, and it's a common question we get and yeah. what it looks like to bridge those two streams together. And I'm really excited to hear about just kind of all the things that you've seen in your experiences, both working as a designer and working with our teams, uh, the teams that we work with, to understand how we can make this whole process a lot easier, more harmonious. Because I know when I was a developer, one of the biggest challenges was just figuring out what I needed when I'm working with my designers. Like, And sometimes I'd run into a file, I'd realize in the middle of my development that I was missing pieces that I, that I needed ahead of time. And if we're running low on time or if, if like it's running really late, I might just make those decisions on my own and yeah. know that that's not ideal. Yeah. Um, so it can be, it can be ideal. Yeah. And so like, I'm really curious about like, what are some of the things that you found in your conversations that help this process? I think one of the functions in Figma that ready for dev little uh, toggle is really helpful, but there's almost like this caveat, right? Like what comes with ready for development and who needs to feel ready? What do they need? And so I find that it's really good. And we hear a lot that we need to maybe prepare a checklist of sorts yeah. or just prepare like what does ready for development mean for your unique team, your really? unique company, uh, maybe there's a generic set that you can start with yeah. in terms of requirements and then build on top of that. So there's a couple of examples that I'm happy to share that yeah. I've seen for. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And it sounds like aside from Ready for Dev as the Figma feature, mm -hmm. like this is really a lot more about process and communication than it is about any specific. Thing. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really curious. How do you generally manage that? Like, how do you make sure that you're aware of the things that a developer needs? Um, and then like, are, are there things that developers can tell you that make this process a little bit easier? I think there's some standard ones that we probably agree on. So like the edge cases, really long strings, different languages, uh, errors that might be happening, mm -hmm. like a connection error. Are there others that you think are coming up? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that comes up quite a bit for me and personally has been just, uh, we talked a lot a little bit, a little bit uh, about this with like edge cases and error cases mm -hmm. but like just making sure that when i'm looking at a design oftentimes what i'm seeing is a very static representation of what i'm going to be building right and as an engineer i'm thinking about how is this going to respond to different screen sizes as the user changes a window mm -hmm. um just all the other like in between steps that we might not necessarily see in figma and so it's really important for me to understand how is this thing supposed to behave and that's not something that usually shows up in the design. Yeah. And sometimes it's captured already in a system. Like maybe it's in mm -hmm. the design system. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not. But it's good to just be aligned on, oh, maybe this motion spec or the transition between these two things is already captured. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's something net new, yeah. then maybe creating a prototype, a video or something like that and adding a link into the documentation, that could be super helpful. I think one of the challenges is Sometimes when we go through this process, uh -huh. I'll get a file and I'll have like a certain amount of time to finish this task, this project. And by then my designer is already working on something else or in a different project. And so it becomes really hard to have any sort of like async communication at that point. Um, and it becomes really hard to like, if I did need something that was missing, it becomes really hard to get that in that process. And so are there some things that you've seen, some strategies? to avoid that to begin with, or to like kind of reduce the pain there a little bit? That might be super unique to each pair. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the checklist is helpful. Yeah. Any sort of documentation, annotations, which I know that you have another conversation about, uh -huh. like those are super helpful just to get aligned on earlier on. Yeah. And that can just save so much time in the long run. Yeah. But like what, have, what are some of the things that have been really successful that you've seen? Yeah, I think for when there's already a design system established, really? maybe even aligning on what frameworks or libraries that are available to use right on project, just so you can know a little bit more about the scope. Um, but earlier on, just having, I don't know, total alignment, it's, it's hard to like, yeah. like capture the full scope of that for each mm -hmm. project. For me, earlier on, as much as possible, 
even during problem definition or problem scope, like it's still helpful to have a developer perspective at that point. Mm -hmm. I find it so helpful, especially especially in the design process. Like in my experience, some of the best ideas I feel like have come from developers mm -hmm. and it's just like a really important perspective to have. I think a lot of development teams would also like to be involved earlier on just to be aware of like, what is this thing that we're gonna be building? Mm -hmm. What do I need to be aware of? Yeah. Um, and just even being able to catch things ahead of time. Like lots, uh, there are some times where I've worked with designers where um, something that we built might have existed as a pattern, but the one, the design that I get doesn't isn't using that pattern or isn't using some of our tokens. Yeah. Or like the common names that we've aligned on. And so that becomes another point of like back and forth where it's like, oh, hey, like, did you mean to use the existing pattern or is this something brand new? And like going through the trade-offs of like, okay, when should we make something brand new versus using the existing pattern? Because using the existing pattern might be really quick and easy for me. Um, but creating something net new might take extra time and might push back our project even further. And it's not that it's not that I wouldn't want to create that new thing, but I think we also we all have our own projects and we all have our own timelines and we want to make sure that we're delivering on time and being able to flag ahead of time if like, oh, this thing is going to take a little bit longer and here's why. So we can justify that amount of time. Yeah, having that flag and catch is so helpful to mm -hmm. it's it's hard for us to keep track of everything that is available and just having that, you know, counterpart is nice. Yeah, and like, I, I definitely don't know any, uh, everything about design, so it'd be nice to just be able to like engage with you and understand like your intent yeah, and like what you're trying to do and say like, oh, actually we've done this kind of thing before and it removes some of the stress of uncertainty. For sure, yeah. Well, I'd love to share some of the files that we've seen in action uh -huh. on Community. So yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, there are a few here that I'd love to bring up. Okay, so this is a developer handoff checklist widget, and it's been able to just align folks on the types of things that they need. Yeah. So in here, you'll see that there's some just basic ones that we can leverage. Yeah. But if they want to, you know, put in their custom ones, you know, insured typeface efficiency, standardized yeah. Figma type styles, et cetera. Maybe you don't need those. Maybe it's already taken care of. Mm -hmm. You can use that. Um, here's just another one. Like I just did a quick search in community yeah. and like dev checklist and these popped up, could be helpful. And then one other idea that isn't a widget, and this was a project I did a few years ago. So bear with me, the, some of the screenshots are a little older, but the idea here is that you create these like onboarding cards yeah. that you can then propagate to all of your designers uh -huh. that help developers onboard into your project. So if we just like go inside here really fast, uh -huh. um, you'll see that there's some tips on how to navigate the file. And maybe it's a person who's never used Figma. Yeah. They can come in here, they can use this little component tip card, mm -hmm. bring it into their design, and then ultimately you know, help with the education process, like help with the onboarding process. I guess. Um, so just these are a handful of ideas that maybe can help you all. Yeah, I definitely like this bit about the onboarding like tips, especially as somebody who the first time I went into Figma, I had no idea what was going Yeah. On. You know, like just figuring out how to get around. Um, and it's definitely something we hear a lot from our teams where like a lot of developers aren't as familiar with Figma. And so it feels like there is a little bit of communication and process building that's involved in making sure that this this process goes really smoothly. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth it in terms of if I can be in the file and work with you directly, especially if we, do, we don't necessarily get to meet asynchron uh, synchronously, I can like leave a comment and we can discuss like, oh, like, why is this thing like, uh, why does this button, um, why is this button not one of the design system components? Mm -hmm. And then we can have that exchange and figure out like, oh, this is actually something that's completely brand new and needs to be new and we can set that up even before um, even before I get started coding and this prevents me from kind of like going back and forth in the way that I work. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just Figma being an infinite canvas, it can be maybe just hard to follow along, but there are ways to structure the file where yeah. maybe you want to tell a very specific story as part of that, like Figma gives you the opportunity. Yeah, and I like that point that you were making about all the different checklists that we have mm. where you're right, it's not going to be the same from team to teams. We might be working on different products, different platforms. But in order for us to come up with a process that works for us, 
we need to be able to talk about it, have like a kickoff maybe. And then once we've seen something happen, we can kind of refine it over time so that it fits more and more of our workflows. And there are fewer, fewer repetitive conversations happening. And then we can focus on just kind of like, oh, how can we make this product better? How can we push this even further? Uh -huh. um, and it becomes less about like really my uh, really my new details that might have been you know, we've been able to address in other ways and we get to focus on doing some more creative things and being able to push the whole process further and save time yeah for sure yeah i've seen some really cool customer checklists that are just so thorough and it's baked into their template mm -hmm. so they might even have an entire design file with each page having their own checklist oh wow like, oh this is our mobile checklist and if you're also doing web this is a different page yeah and they've just been so cool and they've partnered with their developers just to really get the right ones yeah. you know and so the designers know okay what do i need to prepare i know exactly how to move forward one last thing that i wanted to talk about is there's this like little gap between design and development where there's a piece of like i might not know exactly what you mean when yeah. you leave a note for me and vice versa like, how do you deal with that process? Yeah, that one's unique. I've been in certain cases where I completely trusted my developer mm -hmm. to interpret a transition. Uh, so maybe it was a loading state or an empty state or just something loading in. Yeah. And maybe that like skeleton loading wasn't like a P0 for us. Uh -huh. And so I'm totally OK. And I trust them to take care of that. Yeah. And they'll just let me know, like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and use this library because it's already for free. Yeah. You know? And so in those cases, it might not always be like that. Yeah. And so maybe just spot it or identify it. Maybe they'll let you know, hey, there's a gap here. Yeah. What do you want to do with this transition? I think that makes sense. And then especially as you work with the same people over and over, mm -hmm. you kind of naturally start building that trust. Totally. Like, oh, I don't need to remind, I don't need to remind him about this, this transition because we've kind of done this and I, I, I kind of trust the output here. And I think like being able to call out those moments and call out those moments where like, hey, if something here is like really confusing, I need to know like ASAP mm -hmm. so that we can figure this out and figure out a new way to move forward. That's yeah. really, that's really helpful. Like the next project, you'll know, okay, let's just, we can move faster. Yeah. Well, I wanted to thank you for coming. Um, I want, before we close out, I wanted to ask about, is there one tip that you have when working with developers that you absolutely wish they knew? about design. Yeah, there are a lot. I think the one thing I would want to highlight is to just fully take advantage of the live sort of browser of okay. the Figma file, mm -hmm. which essentially means that you can link everything and it will always be an updated source of truth. Yeah. So if you wanted to link from a component library to your design file, just generously use that command L or control L and put it between files, put it between FigGem files, put it in your tickets, put it in your docs. You'll never lose sight of that. And so I use it generously, just command L, put it in all of your documents. That's yeah. what I would say. That's pretty awesome. Um, thanks for joining us. And this was Bridging the App. Can't wait to see you in the next episode.